and welcome to Scientists in Action Bringing Back Bison. My name is Kate Neff and I'm the Virtual Programs Coordinator for the Denver Museum of Nature. Where in fact we are not broadcasting from today. Um, as you can see, we are out in the field. We are just a short drive from downtown Denver. However, we are at the uh, <laughs> Rocky Mountain Arsenal, wild, our National Wildlife Refuge. Um, I have joining with me today an amazing scientist that I'm going to hand the mic over to in just a minute, um, but a couple housekeeping items I want to touch base with today. Um, first and foremost, if you are on camera school, I believe that's Moreland Elementary, um, we're going to ask that you stay muted and off camera until we cue you in about 15 or 20 minutes um, for open Q&A. If you are not going to be in on camera school today, we would still love to hear your questions. I have a chat going here in Zoom and I will be able to hear from you and pass those questions along to ECS um, in a matter of minutes. So post chat questions as you come up with them. Otherwise, we're going to have a number of polls um, and hear a lot of amazing things about bison. So uh, without further ado, ECS, um, tell us about yourself. Who are you? Uh, what do you do here at the refuge? Uh, well, hi everyone. My name is Isis Rivera. I'm an urban park ranger here at the refuge. I work with visitor services. So most of my job consists of, you know, connecting with visitors, answering their questions, uh, also connecting with schools, um, like all of you, as well as community organizations, and of course, connecting people to nature. That's our main goal in visitor services. Uh, so I do this by scheduling field trips, uh, facilitating environmental and interpretive programs. Uh, but honestly, the work of a urban park ranger can vary very widely. So sometimes I get to help out with the wildlife side of things, uh, such as ferret surveys, uh, deer surveys, and of course, what, what's happening here today, which is the bison gathering. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And before we talk about bison um, in greater detail, we actually have a poll question for you. So students, if you're one-to-one -one on computers, you can respond on your own. Otherwise, teachers, if you could survey for your students. And our question is, how much can a male bison weigh? This is a great guessing Ooh, one. Yes. We have a couple of options, 1,000 pounds, 1,500. Um, we have 2,000 pounds or even 2,500 pounds. Yeah, submit your answers. Really think about this one. I know they're pretty big animals, so. Yeah. Just... Can't, can't really go wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's a big number, but one of these is more correct than, more correct than the others. <laughs> All right, take a couple seconds more if you haven't yet. All right, so let's go ahead and close that poll and see how all our friends in the audience did. Ooh, let's see. Ooh, what is the majority that? have guessed 2,000 pounds. How'd they do? What? That was amazing. It is exactly, well, maybe not exactly, but yes, 2,000 pounds. <laughs> That's the correct answer. Cool. So good job, everyone. Seems like uh, a lot of you already have, you know, kind of some knowledge about bison. So. Uh, we'll dive a little bit deeper into that but yeah thank you for all your answers nice job some you know maybe future bison experts right. I so know, maybe they can be here i'm excited <laughs> to see what questions y'all come up with because uh -huh. it sounds like you already know stuff about bison yes. um so can you give us actually some fast facts like what is a what is a bison like what is bison? Yeah, that's what a great is question <laughs> Especially for people who haven't seen them before, what are these animals? Yeah, so bison, um, or at least specifically the North American bison, is a bison species native to North America. They are the largest land ma mammal found here. And just as we saw, they can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. Uh, that's for the mature bulls, uh, which are the males. And females or cows can weigh up to 1,200 pounds or so, uh, but they stand around five feet to six feet tall at the shoulder. And again, they have this like characteristic back hump as well. Uh, and a question that we do get a lot is what is the difference between a bison and a buffalo? And so bison is what we have here in North America. They, again, they are a species that's native to this area. And there's also another bison species in Europe as well. And buffalo are what we, uh, referred to as the ones that are found in Asia or Africa, which have the water buffalo as well as the Cape buffalo. And here we see a picture of a buffalo. So you can see, you know, their their horns are uh, slightly long, more elongated. 
they do this like little curve. Uh, we talked about it being kind of like a handlebar <laughs> mustache. Handlebar mustache. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they don't seem quite as furry, maybe. Yes. They're also not as furry as you could see in the picture. Uh, and that's because, you know, they're all kind of adapted to their own environments. Uh, the bison here have to withstand some pretty cold temperatures in the winter. So, you know, they have more of that fur on them. Nice. Mm -hmm. but, Stuff. Are they are they related somehow? That is kind of a question I think people also have as well. Yeah, so they they are kind of like cousins. They're part of the um, you can say it better oh, actually. Bob and I. Yes, Bob and I <laughs> family. So um, yeah, they you know these are like hoofed animals. Uh, so they are you know kind of distantly related. And some of the bison actually do have cattle genes. So they they mm. sometimes are like bred uh, for their for their meat. So you breed. Uh, um, which what we call a beefalo. Which a is beefalo. A beefalo. I know it's a, <laughs> sad because it's for I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but here we do have one of the most genetically diverse uh, bison herds. So those cattle genes are, you know, very, very low. Uh, but that is something that we watch out for in, you know, the, the conservation herds in that okay. cattle. Because these are, yeah. as conservation herds, they're not for eating. Right? right. They're not for eating. These are for protecting. And there's a few conservation herds in the country. Uh, we're one of them. And we also have four other refuges that have conservation uh, herds as well. Bison. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know, we know they're maybe sort of related to, to cows and mm -hmm. and other kind of bovidae distantly, like cousins yeah. per se. And we now know that they're pretty tall. And for context, I'm 5'7", so a six foot bison, I mean... At the shoulder. Ooh. like that's... Oh, at the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So they're still even like <laughs> bigger. <laughs> so I guess that leads me to my next question. Um, uh -huh. We know they're pretty big and they're heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, could I outrun a bison? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> How fast do they run? You know, although they look big and heavy, uh, they're actually really great athletes. Uh, these animals are fast and agile and can run up to 35 miles an hour and jump five feet high. Uh, also, we, we see we a, have one. Oh, yeah, wait, we, have, wait, we see it while running. It, will oh. it hit 35? I, let's, let's see. see. This doesn't seem to be like a running bison. <laughs> This is this strolling bison? This is a strolling bison. Okay, so 35 miles per hour, jumping yes. five feet. No, I cannot outrun a bison. Yeah. Maybe this one. but no, They can turn around very quickly as well and are great swimmers. So, you know, some things that you might not um, consider when you see this, like, massive creature. Yeah, this one doesn't want to run. This one just doesn't even care, and I'm not mad about it. Yeah. They're oh. amazing. It looks like... It's wearing a sweater with like bell sleeves made out yes. of fuzz. Oh my god, yes. Oh. And that's also something that's characteristic running. of the bison as well. Uh, this kind of furry upper torso. Right, yeah. And they have like really fuzzy, uh, frizzy hair. Uh -huh. And they all have like really different hairstyles. Oh. So that's something fun to see, you know, like just see the variety in, in the hairstyles of the oh, bison. Cool. <laughs> okay. So, and... They have that furry upper body and you mentioned them um kind of being adapted to climates like mm -hmm. so this is some place that they're native to right like this is a climate that they feel good in yes yes so these are uh bison that are usually found in the short grass prairie mm -hmm. so this is you know their their ecosystem their habitat um they have everything they need to survive in this place you know they got cool. their food their water their shelter um everything even so. mm -hmm. uh, like even during winter they stay out here yes they do wow. sometimes you know they, they kind of huddle together mm -hmm. uh and you know some of the mature bulls which are usually kind of apart from the herd uh except for mating season they they kind of get close to trees kind of to break mm -hmm. the the wind a little but they yeah they they huddle together they have this like massive coat as you can see in the pictures and wow. Uh, once it gets to the warmer months, they do they do start shedding that um, because, as you can imagine, it can get pretty hot here. Wow! Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they'll they'll like wallow on the ground, like in the dirt, to help shed some oh, of that fur. Nice. <laughs> but also that protects them against uh, some bugs. So you know, having this layer of um, dirt. Oh, we have another bison we running. Have another we have a running person. one. Let's see. Oh, can we? Oh, oh. doing some little kicks and jumping. Maybe I'll jump five feet high. We'll see. <laughs> jump the fence. Please don't. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about what we're doing and just uh, in behind the camera in just a minute here yeah. because this is pretty unique that we're seeing these bison run by. 
Okay, so you mentioned that they live in herds, correct? Mm -hmm. So like other bovidae or like cattle, they, they tend to live in groups, you said? Yes. Okay. Uh, so most of the herd is usually together, and that's uh, mainly made up of like uh, the female, the cows, mm -hmm. um, calves, young bulls, as well as like yearlings, which are like one-year-old uh, okay. bison. Uh, and usually they, the, the more mature bulls kind of stay apart from the, that big herd. Uh, they don't come together until like mating season okay. or rut, which is kind of late July through August. Um, and also the herds are pretty interesting because they have like a a female lead, oh. which uh, is the one that chooses where to go, where to like graze, uh, if it's rest time, uh, if it's time to drink water. So they have this like queen female, bison. Yes. <laughs> Good. Mat a matriarch matriarchal society yes um that hurt. and then those bulls just come in uh for the purpose of babies yeah. um well, kind of on the note of babies because mm -hmm. i know this is one thing that people love um to talk about is uh what do we call baby bison well, that's a great question fact, we have a poll we would like to post to you um mm -hmm. and have a guess what do we call baby bison Red dogs, bisonettes, herd pups, or hoof pubs? <laughs> All, All great answers. <laughs> All of the above are strange, and one of them, however, is true. I didn't know mm -hmm. until this broadcast, but go ahead, students, teachers, make a guess. All right, a couple more seconds to throw your answer in the poll. What do we call those baby bison? All right, we'll see how well you know your bison. I know. All right, bison experts. Let's go ahead and close down that poll. See how they did. Ooh, let's see. I can't. Ooh, herd pups. Herd pups. Herd oh, that's pups. a good one. That's a really good one. That was like the majority. Herd pups. Yeah. So, unfortunately, that was not the correct answer. <laughs> not the answer we were looking for. Uh, baby bison are actually called red dogs. I know. It's a, it's a weird term, right? Yeah. Red dogs. Uh, but that's mostly uh, due to their coloration. As you can see in this B-roll right here, they, they are a little orange to red in color. So that's Cute. where the name comes from, red dogs. Uh, but yeah, little, calves are so interesting. Um, they, you know, they can walk as after, like an hour after being born. Wow. So, I mean, can yeah, you talk about <laughs> growing quickly? Yeah. Can you imagine you're born and an hour later you are walking? Yeah. Um, why is that? Like, what is the benefit of them walking so soon? Um, you know, it's usually because they, they do have like predators uh -huh. in their surroundings. So they have to be able to like outrun them in a way. Uh, fortunately, here at the refuge, we don't really have uh, any of their main predators. Mm -hmm. uh, we mostly have coyotes, but uh, they have there's a pretty big herd. So they they protect each other. Um, so, you know, they, they might not run as fast or have to run as fast <laughs> as soon as they're born. Uh -huh. Have a little bit of a buffer. <laughs> a, a buffer for the non-buffalo. Yeah. Um, very cool. Okay. So about an hour after they're born, they're already walking. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for them to like mature per se? Um, when do they start having babies of their own? You know, uh, females are usually uh, mature by two years old. So that's when they, they can start mm -hmm. having babies. And bison can live up to 15 to 20, maybe 25 years. Okay. Uh, so they, they live kind of a, a long life. But yeah. And um, bulls are re usually reach like their peak, mm -hmm. I guess, sexual maturity. Uh -huh. um, or I guess when they're most fit uh, at, at like around six to eight years old. Okay. So a little um, older for, yes. for male bison. But I mean, they still, they still breed uh, before that as well. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So things are definitely expedited in the world of bison. Mm -hmm. They they live shorter and do things faster than humans do. Yeah. Um, okay. E even a few months after they're born, they start losing that like red orange color and get that like iconic brownish uh, uh -huh. in their fur. Oh, that's a fast bison that we. Oh, yeah, we've seen. got a couple more bison running through. <laughs> <laughs> they are ready to be out. <laughs> yeah. um, so one thing I guess uh, that we haven't talked about yet that I'm also thinking about mm -hmm. is to live that long and be so healthy they have to have a healthy diet right what yes. do bison eat oh that's a another great question uh and i'm gonna give you some time to think about it uh just think about the prairie mm -hmm. ecosystem what's found here 
So let's just give a second. But as you can tell, there's a lot of grass. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I see where you're going with this. <laughs> So bison are mainly herbivores. They, they are grazing animals and they usually graze um, between nine and 11 hours a day. Wow. So that's a lot of grass. That's a lot uh, of grass. Yes. Yeah. They're known as the, the prairie uh, lawnmower. And something very really interesting about their grazing is that they, they don't fully like pull out the, the roots of the, the well, grasses are, they're grazing, but they, they live a few inches. And so that, that helps that. Uh, grass grow like a little bit more vibrant and healthier uh, so they're helping us in our restoration efforts at the prairie as well cool so, mm -hmm. so just give them the grass a little trim yeah yeah um a little nice mow. <laughs> oh it's very cool you can see with this footage they are very happy to be eating grass mm -hmm. i don't know that i could live just on grass but <laughs> they are doing a great job these are some very fast and large animals yeah um, they eat a ton of grass <laughs> that's amazing so you mentioned their predators a minute ago and i do see a, a question in the chat um mm -hmm. what are some of these predators that they might have to fuel themselves to outrun with grass uh, you know wolves can be okay. one coyotes um so just like those larger canines okay i guess um yeah that, that would be their their main Predators. Predator. Uh -huh. Things with sharper teeth than yes. bison. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, as well, um, if you're thinking about how fast they are and how big, and mm -hmm. they don't have those sharp teeth that maybe like carnivores do, but mm -hmm. are bison dangerous to humans? Ooh, um, you know, they, they are pretty big. So mm -hmm. we always encourage people to, you know, keep their distance from them. Uh, they are wild animals and can be pretty unpredictable. So we just want to give them space. You know, they're not used to being super close to humans. And so, you know, once they that we once we're closer to them, they can get a little bit, you know, uh, stressed. Okay. So uh, definitely give them space. But uh, they're normally not really dangerous. You know, they like to do their own thing. But like any wild animal, mm -hmm. if it's, you know, uh, under pressure, can definitely um, do some damage I would say. Okay. But again they're very big and they have huge horns <laughs> so if you've ever wanted to be friends with a bison make sure it's a long distance relationship yes because yikes um yeah, on that note I, you know we're working pretty closely okay maybe not us like we're we're getting to watch but people mm -hmm. behind us right now and I don't know if Craig who's behind the camera today would like to do a quick pan but um we have some people working pretty closely with bison right now mm -hmm. so um ECs, what can you tell us about this i think it's called low stress handling is that correct that's correct so what we, are we yeah what are we doing with these bison today yeah so during the bison gathering which is what's happening uh here right now we try to employ what it's called as a low stress handling technique and that just means you know we're we're kind of staying calm uh we usually just use our body position to move the bison where we want them to go uh, we kind of make it so that uh, we're using the animal's uh, instincts to to move. So it's it's very low pressure, very calm. So as you can see right now, um, people are very quiet. A lot of like movement going on, but again, that's what we what we want. That can also be because it it is a, a big uh, event. You know, there's over 200 animals involved in this gathering. So there are 200 animals here at the refuge, yes, right? Yes, yes, okay. yeah, exactly. And so you can imagine it's it's a little bit stressful for us to have to um, kind of run them through the corral so they get their their testing, their, their chipped, uh, all of that stuff. So again, slow and steady is the best way to go. And, you know, we usually have uh, less safety incidents that way as well. Cool. So. So just mm -hmm. for our friends who are watching, kind of some context as this is, you know, and you see, so you can correct me um, mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, but this is like pretty much the only time these bison are this close to humans, right? Because this is yeah. their like annual wellness check. Yes. We go to the doctors to get like checked out by our, our doctors or in your case, probably pediatricians. <laughs> and this is the day for the bison to go and get their vaccines. Yeah. Correct? Their little so, doctor's visit okay. of the year. Uh, but yeah, as you can see in the footage, we are on catwalks. So we're kind of um, a little bit above the bison. We're not super close, <laughs> but we are pretty close. Uh, but that's in in order to, you know, again, ease that stress mm -hmm. in them. So 
We also have some plywood set up around the corral so that we can squat down and just hide from them. And that way they, you know, they don't see as many people and are not as uh, afraid yeah. to kind of come into a corral. And it's pretty interesting because, oh yeah, we're seeing some uh, of our low stress handling techniques. You can cool. see the, ra the back and forth rocking. And that's mostly, you know, to get them again, to move uh, certain places when we do that. They, they tend to move the opposite way of us. Okay. And so <laughs> all of you, them. yeah, <laughs> all of you watching from your classrooms, maybe you can try doing that. Just <laughs> rock back and forth as if you're moving a bison. We're going to do that to stay a little bit warm. Today. I know. It's a little chilly today. Chilly, yeah. windy, dusty. Yeah. Um, okay. It's good to be in the field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, next time um, you do that and you're your family is like what are you doing <laughs> pretending i'm hurting bison no, no. um if we're really lucky we'll see actually a truck uh driving them up we did see them about an hour ago and mm -hmm. that was a unique experience that was so amazing this is a cool day to be here um mm -hmm. so we're doing these medical exams and whatnot um i think i don't remember if you mentioned this but we were looking at genetics right yeah. yes. so why is that important what is the point of some of this conservation effort uh well, as I don't know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but uh, bison used to be in North America in like the millions, uh, but because of, you know, urban development, settlement, uh, the railroad, you know, they, they started, uh, their numbers started decreasing. They were also hunted for their hides. And at some point they were hunted nearly to extinction. Wow. So from those like 30 million animals that uh, were out here, only maybe 500 to a thousand remained. And so, yeah, you can tell that, um, you know, their genetic pool was a little bit smaller, of course. So mm -hmm. uh, people started getting involved, you know, with all these conservation efforts to make sure that we, we keep this iconic species uh, going and thriving. And so part of it is um, exchanging animals between conservation herds to make sure that we have uh, a diverse genetic pool and that will assure that they, they can, you know, keep thriving. Um, in the future, because without without that, we estimate that we might lose the bison in the next 200 years. So it's very important work uh, that we we are maintaining those that genetic diversity. Cool. I guess as far as like uh, interference goes, and I just think about this because I have a question as well. Um, so mm -hmm. obviously we're engaging with them to help them make sure that we've got like a strong gene pool and mm -hmm. genes uh, for. For our friends watching, um, as a quick reminder, genes are kind of what make you you. It's like your DNA. Um, it, you share common genes with the people you're related to. Um, but obviously, the more similar your genes are, maybe the more susceptible you are to getting sick. Mm -hmm. And that's in part why, like, you know, it, typically you want to um, have children with people who have genes very different from yours. Mm -hmm. So having wide gene pool is great. Um, so that's kind of a, a method of interference we've taken. But do we interfere if the animals are ever like hurt, like on a kind of a superficial level? Do you ever um, engage with them in the field that way? You know, uh, not unless it's very serious, but mm -hmm. they do get hurt a lot because during rut, they tend to kind of fight each other. They use their horns a lot to um, assert their dominance. And so they, they, they do get pretty, pretty messed up, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but they're used to it. You know, this is what they normally do. Um, they're tough. Yes, they're tough. They have really tough skin. <laughs> okay. uh, so if, you know, they might get hurt here and there, but we typically just kind of let nature take its course. Um, and they usually bounce back, you know, cause they're used to all that fighting. Mm -hmm. Part of that, like wild, wild instinct and just mm -hmm. being a wild animal, which yeah. in fact these, indeed are um do they and both males and females have horns correct yes they both do okay cool. yeah but the females don't really like fight with each other as like that they're you know? too busy eating yeah. grass <laughs> yes <I don't> <laughs> okay. having red dogs cool. uh -huh. so you know we're getting so many good questions um mm -hmm. i would like to actually go ahead and invite our on-camera school even to join us on camera um and we so Marland Elementary. Um, I believe it's elementary. If you would like to join us on camera and whatnot and come up to the camera. Hey, Hi. nice to see you. Okay. Um, nice, loud, clear, whoever comes up to the camera. Let's go ahead and hear your question. We're so excited. What questions do you guys have? Any questions? Oh, I see a hand back there. I do see a couple hand raises. 
there are no bad questions. We got a real stumper last uh, last <laughs> session, and we can tell you about that in a minute. But yes, yeah, we come up. Your questions. All right, we have Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Um, what would happen if bison's wins would it went extinct? <gasps> oh, oh, that's a good question. That's a sad question. I okay, know. what would happen if they went extinct? You know, we actually rely on them a lot uh, for prairie health. Uh, they are they have ecological superpowers that help them kind of restore prairie habitat and keep it healthy and vibrant. Uh, for example, they use their hooves uh, to kind of break down plant material as they're walking, and that helps it decompose faster, but also returns nutrients to the soil uh, quicker as well. And with their hooves, they also push seeds down into the ground to help, you know, reseed areas and they can also carry seeds in their fur so they're very important in uh, prairie restoration efforts and just to keep the the prairie habitat healthy uh, so without them you know this this would be a very not a, a very healthy prairie mm. i would say so they're very vital in uh, this ecosystem kind of gardeners and yes just for context uh the bison were not already scared i mean they they were a long time ago in the last couple decades however this was i think it was military land right and yeah so there weren't bison um the the ground the ecosystem was not a healthy place um they were they were doing some manufacturing of chemicals and things out here mm -hmm. and only in the last couple decades since mm -hmm. the bison have been brought back have we seen that this ecosystem has kind of exploded mm -hmm. with animals and flora and fauna whole bunch of different healthy things so the bison mm -hmm. are like little gardeners and without yeah. them it would be sad. Plus, yeah. they're just really cute. So <laughs> that was a great question. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Sophie. What's another question from Moreland Elementary? Hi, Slope, come on up. Um, you said that the bison get shots, right? But how do they get shots? Because you also said not to get too close to them. So how exactly do you give them that like uh, vaccine? Mm -hmm. That's what we can. And I believe we do have some footage of the squeeze shoot. Uh, so when they go into the corral, uh, they, there's like a little entrance where we push them with our trucks, but then they, they end up at this squeeze shoot that you're looking at right now. And that uh, kind of just gives them a big hug to keep them in place while uh, one of our staff kind of holds their head down. And so, you know, they're very, they're very contained. And that way we can make sure that they're not moving around and hurting themselves and we can give them the, the vaccines that they need and take the samples that we need as well. But yeah, you'll see like the head of the, the bison, we make sure there's like pads that kind of compress in their shoulders to make sure that they're, you know, really secured in there. Wow. But yeah, in a second, you're gonna see there's uh, our staff member that's holding their head while they get their ear tag or they get their chip. Uh, there was a, a wand reader earlier. And yeah, and now they're getting their ear tag. Very cool. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, this is not an everyday occurrence. This is a, a once a year mm -hmm. thing, yeah. maybe luckily for the bison, but uh, no, and it is kind of funny. Um, They they leave and you can tell they're definitely relieved. They don't <laughs> want to be, oh, you can see it, jump yeah. out of that squeeze shoot. Uh, when they leave, they typically are running because they don't want to hang out with us any longer. Yeah. See, there um, it is, there running. Is. <laughs> yeah, so that was a great question. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, we want to be able to do kind of medical care for these bison but we have to be very conscious of moral and elementary. Are there any misconceptions about bisons? Misconceptions. Ooh, that's a great question. I guess the, the main one is the buffalo versus bison. Um, again, we, we already talked about that, you know, how bison are different than uh, buffalo. So that's a big one. Another misconception mm. that they're very slow animals. <laughs> yeah, as we learned today, they are super fast and we can definitely not outrun them. Um, so, right. yeah. And just to give you a, an idea of how like different our running speed is, the average human male can run up to eight miles an hour. So compare that to 25 miles an hour, that's, yes. that's pretty different. That's yes. really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess another one I would add, um, and I 
did not know this um, until recently, but <laughs> these are really smart animals. Um, mm. They seem to have a really good memory. Mm -hmm. um, it is funny. We saw earlier a number of the bison were getting kind of corralled in, and then a few were like, mm, actually, I remember this, and I'm not interested today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they are not, uh, they're not forgetful. They are not unaware. Of, yeah. These are very smart, and they also seem very curious, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, all the more reason to give them space, because sometimes when they get curious, that's when <laughs> things happen, and we will not win because we can't outrun or jump them. Yes, so. and they're also very stubborn. So yeah. we learned that they they have great memories, but also sometimes they just refuse to come to the corral. Uh, so so sometimes we might just leave some of the older bulls out there uh, without going through the shoot. Oh uh, I know. <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah, and even when we've like sent um, bites into other conservation herds, again, for that genetic diversity, that exchange, mm -hmm. uh, some of them just did, did not want to get on the trailers. Oh. So you, you just have to let them go. It's, it's yeah, not they get very it. stubborn. Yeah, you're like, okay, well, that's, I guess, that's uh, no stress. I so guess <laughs> kind of relating to what you just said um, with the moving them to different conservation herds, mm -hmm. um, other than like, so Yellowstone obviously has its own bison herd, but we've got a couple, and you mentioned this earlier, where are some of the other places that bison herds might be today? Uh, so it, we have um, five herds in National Wildlife Refuges. So we're one of the five sites. Uh, there's also herds in, with BLM as well as the National Park Service. And so we, all of the agencies kind of work together uh, to then exchange, you know, animals and make sure that we're keeping them genetic pool diverse. Uh, but also we've um, started working with tribal partners as well. So mm -hmm. just last year we sent some bison to the Rosebud uh, Sioux Tribe in South Dakota. Cool. So now we're kind of um, working with them as well. So it's a, it's a process that, you know, requires a lot of cooperation and um, a lot of ag agencies and tribal partners and organizations are involved. Cool. So it's a it's a very um, big effort. I would nice. say. Mm -hmm. A team, a good team, team project. There you go. Team project, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and throw it back to the classroom. I'd like to steal maybe one or two more questions from you. Perfect. Looks like we got one now. Nice. I was wondering if um ever a bison tried to attack one of your employees yeah like Ooh. they came close and they're just like I'm gonna get you I don't want my shot right now <laughs> that is a great question yeah that's uh, a good question injuries no. um you know not that I know of again we we try to use our low stress handling techniques so the time that we're like face to face with a bison is very non-existent. We're yeah. usually in our trucks, you kind of moving them that way or up in this um, catwalks. So we don't really get to be like right next to a bison. Uh, the the one place where they could maybe get injured is at the squeeze chute because mm -hmm. you know they have such strong necks and heads. Uh, they could like pinch you in between the chute and the horns. But again, the staff that manages that is very well trained and has been doing it for years. So they they're aware of that. Um, so again, we just try to keep in mind um, how bison move mm -hmm. and make sure that we're not anywhere that would put us in danger. So wow. mm -hmm. very rare. Prevent. Yes. Prevention is the Prevent. number one key. There you go. <laughs> Don't put yourself in a situation where the bison might want to headbutt you. Yes. <laughs> that seems terrifying. <laughs> Great question. All right, let's get one more from more. All right, we got Mary. So uh, you got to come up on the screen. So um do bison just eat grass or do they eat like other animals and if they do what animals Ooh. oh that's a great question so bison do mostly eat uh plants they are herbivores uh so it's either grasses leafy plants or like um i think they call it browse so more like um hardier plants oh, okay. uh-huh so they are herbivores they don't eat other animals mm -hmm mostly just grasses. I know it's it's wild because they're so big, right? But as you can yeah. imagine, they have to eat a lot of grass to maintain that. Uh, it's insane. Yes. Oof. Yes. That's a lot of salad. So, well, <laughs> a lot great of salad. Question, Mary. Uh -huh. Great Thank question, Thank you, Elementary. Um, well, on the note of, of eating, actually, I do see in the chat, um, mm -hmm. we have a question. How can coyotes kill red dogs? Do coyotes work together like wolves? 
I don't know a lot about coyotes, but yeah, you know, we have seen them hunt in packs before. They're thought to be more solitary animals, but here at the refuge, like I, mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of coyotes uh, kind of working together to hunt. Sometimes they work with mm -hmm. badgers as well. Yes, no. yeah, they form partnerships with badgers, so then they they go and hunt together. Yeah, but I I think they kind of usually go for the easier prey. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, like rabbits. Um, you know, smaller animals, but they, they could technically go after uh, a red dog. However, again, the, the herd is very protective. So here, you know, I feel like it would be very unlikely. Um, other than that, they, they might just go for like carcasses if they find like a, an already dead okay. something. Mm -hmm. Easy, easier. Yeah, I mean, easier if you think break. about it, if you were going to go for a bison burger, knowing that it's, it's going to be met with horns, that seems pretty intimidating. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. So that's a great question. Yeah. We also have, um, talking about that herb mentality, um, mm -hmm. do mothers uh, of like red dogs, if they ever abandon their babies, um, do they get adopted by other bison? Uh, you know, we, we have seen that happen mm -hmm. in the past. Um, not necessarily that they were being, they were abandoned, but maybe like the mother passed away for some reason uh, after mm -hmm. giving birth. Uh, so they, they could be adopted by other moms, but it really depends. Uh, sometimes they do outcast their uh, their calves if they're like mm -hmm. not gonna survive you know if there there's some complication there and then they think they might not survive so uh, a, go that yeah way. yeah but you yeah, know that it, it can happen they can adopt uh, red dogs as well cool uh -huh. pretty great i know great question um well and also kind of uplifting <laughs> we see that yeah. real herd mentality i know they really take care of each other even when the like a calf is born all of the other moms will like or other cows mm -hmm. come surround the the new mom and just kind of make sure that you know she's okay. doing okay the calf is okay cool. uh-huh it's very cute yeah so they well, work they, together for sure they do have their little bison play group all those <laughs> images of the bison running together very cute yeah. um so we have one more poll question and i would love to throw it your way um it's thinking about why we protect bison um obviously we know they're amazing but why? So poll question number three, if we could go ahead and get that cued. Why is it important to protect the American bison? There's a couple different components. Um, and I don't know, is one, are one of these answers more than the other? Go ahead, we see your answers. Please see your answers. I'm going to go ahead and give you a couple more seconds. If you've not placed your answer yet, please do so. All right, let's go ahead and close that poll. So why is it important to protect the American bison? Overarchingly, it looks like the answer is going to be all of the above. So if yeah. we're thinking about, yeah, like, why we protect them um i mean obviously they're very cool to look at mm -hmm. but it sounds like there's maybe not just a conservation aspect but a cultural one as well yeah um why are these animals so significant uh yeah so historically they've been um kind of working together with tribes uh tribes relied on them a lot for you know food um as a source of like shelter as well they use their hides to make their teepees and so there's that historical cultural component uh, and some parts of the animal were also used for ceremonies uh, for example um, other parts that were used they they used their hooves uh, as glue they would just boil them down uh, the the bladder as a, a water pouch their horns as cups so it was a very integral part of um, certain native american tribes uh, but also, as we talked about today, they they are, you know, what keep the the prairie healthy. They are these like ecological superheroes um, that allow us to do our restoration work. And so, of course, they're culturally important, but also ecological, ecologically important as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like there's like a long history. Bison, I mean, bison has been here for thousands of years yes. and obviously we used to have huge numbers of them mm -hmm. um hopefully we see kind of that resurgence of bison as we keep bringing them back 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, they have such like an integral part of kind of that ecosystem. And they're honestly, they're just so cool to look at. They are really cool to look at. I mean, we, cool. we see some in the back right now. I think they were trying to round them up. Our next group, I don't know if you can pan to that. There are the trucks trying to move the bison. It's it's pretty wild. Uh, like we were saying earlier, seeing trucks <laughs> trying to wrangle bison. Let's see. And again, sometimes we're not successful, but <laughs> patience is definitely the key here. So we just got to keep trying. I was reading recently that mm -hmm. uh, the American bison is like, our national mammal is that yes, correct too? yes it is our national mammal oh so they're really iconic in that sense mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. cool so this is something that we've had for a long time and you know allowed humans to survive and thrive for hundreds and hundreds of years um mm -hmm. and so losing them would just be so sad from kind of a, a cultural and um historical level but as well as that kind of ecological ones so. yeah and also i mean we although we might not think about it we we do rely on the prairie habitat a lot as well mm -hmm. um prairie provides a uh, very good space for pollinators to come uh so we have you know those like native wildflowers and um, grasses and so you know without these pollinators then we wouldn't have um certain crops so again you know that kind of ties it back to how the bison is somewhat you know kind of connected to us as well uh -huh. uh, we're at the end of the day all connected uh in some way or another so very cool i don't know you might not have chocolate otherwise there's oh. no bison it's not it's a weird well, connection but <laughs> <laughs> well i'm really glad we also got to see that uh quick snippet of the trucks um navigating bison and encouraging them to come this way medical exam mm -hmm. so on that note um what do you want to leave the students with today uh, well, first of all, I wanted to thank you all for tuning in. I feel like it's really important to learn about these things. Uh, now you kind of have a better idea of how important the bison is to um, to the prairie ecosystem and also to us. Uh, but if you want to do something to help out uh, restoration efforts in the prairie, you can also plant native uh, flowers at your houses, uh, maybe at your school. Uh, cool. But that, that also helps maintain, you know, patches. Uh, or areas where pollinators can travel to so that it's closer uh, together, especially in urban areas, because there's a lot of fragmentation, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of um, kind of separate spots. So we want to kind of make a, a, <laughs> a more closely um, placed uh, habitat for them cool. since it's so fragmented. Mm -hmm. So if you love yeah, bison, you. because yeah. who wouldn't? Uh, plant flowers at your school or in your garden um, is a good takeaway you yeah. can be involved as we can serve and bring back bison um, we want to go ahead and thank uh, obviously our friends at the in uh, the refuge here um, we have ECS on camera and we've got Sarah and Susan off camera um, Greg's behind camera he's awesome from the museum he's helping us out we have Matthew down below running all our tech and Kim and Asa in the studio. Um, so thank you everyone for making this happen. And thank you for joining us. Um, if you enjoyed today's program, we would love to see you again on Thursday, November 17th. We have our next broadcast coming up soon. Um, it's called T-Rex to Turkey in which we go to the basement of the museum. We're gonna talk to ornithologists and paleontologists about how birds descended from dinosaurs. So another sort of animal centric um broadcast coming up next month so awesome. thank you again um oh, thank you let's let's bring back bison yes, why not they're yeah. so cool <laughs> all right thank you thank you